In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to make this end of your open spanner wrench. So I'm going to start a new drawing. I'll look normal to the front plane, and then I'm going to sketch in the front plane. I'm going to start by creating the center lines. Now this sketch can be quite tricky and a bit of a pain. So I've added my scanner center lines. I'm going to use mouse gestures to activate smart dimension. And I'll add the 10 degrees. And what I would encourage you to do is do a little bit, get it fully defined, and come back and do a bit more. So I've got my two center lines. I'm going to activate line. I'm going to draw this line. I want to be careful what relationships I grab. Double click twice. So I'm still in line mode. Come over here. I'll push escape. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to make these two lines parallel. Then I'll make these two parallel. I'll also make these two equal. And then I'll add the symmetry relationship between these. So now they're symmetrical and they're equal. I'm going to add one more center line here. And these two lines will be perpendicular. And then the center line will be coincident with the origin. So I'm going to go back into dimension mode and I'm going to add the dimensions to fully define it. So this is 0 0.625 and this distance here and I want to be really careful when I get this one so this is the measurement I want. It's 0 0.618. I'll just push escape and bring this line back a bit. Just neaten it up a little bit. So that's good. It's fully defined might want to save my work at this point in case I really mess up. I'm going to switch to three-point arc. I'm going to use this style of three-point arc. So I'm just going to create this arc and I'm going to get it fully defined. So its center and this line are coincident. I'll activate smart dimension and we'll dimension it 373. I'm going to push escape. So at this point, everything's fully defined and that's good. It's when you add the remaining five three-point arcs that things may not go so well. So don't panic. Don't get upset. Control Z undo is one of your best friends now. I'm going to use this style of three-point arc. I'll click here and then I'll come up here. And now I'm just trying to focus on where that center point should be getting it roughly close and that'll work. I'm going to add another three-point arc here. Again, I'm going to keep adding my three-point arcs, getting their position roughly correct. Working my way around and the final three-point arc is here. And all I'm trying to do when I place these with the final click, I'm going to push escape now, is get their center point close to where it should be. So I know this three point arc, its center point here, the whole control select this center line, it's coincident with that. So the next thing I want to do is I want to make sure I have all my tangencies. So I'm going to work my way around and I'm going to make all these arcs tangent with one another. pull this point back down. I want to maintain the rough shape I'm after. So keep adding the tangencies. This one I have, so I'm happy with that. Next, I'm going to add dimensions and relationships until it's fully defined. So I'm going to use mouse gestures, activate smart dimension, and this one is one inch. So before I go any further, I want to see where its center point moved to. Its center point out here, that rough location is good. So I'm going to continue on. Again, back into dimension mode. This is half inch. Everything looks good. And I also know from here to this arc center, get the proper dimension, is 0.4. Now if I want to verify this one's good, I can also dimension to its center and it should be 0.204, and it is. 
SolidWorks will ask me, do I want to leave this driven? Yes, it's driven by the other constraints. So I'm good so far. So we'll move these over here. Still in dimension mode. I want to next choose this arc. I'm going to make it one inch and I'm going to move this over here and I'm going to rebuild. And I did that in case it goes crazy. If it goes crazy, then I would get this dimension close to the one inch and not worry about it and come back and fix it later. I'm going to say OK, because that went all right. And the next dimension I want is from the furthest point on this arc to the furthest point on this arc, which is called the maximum arc condition. To do that while I dimension, I just hold shift. So I'll hold shift and select this entity and then this entity. And then I'll click to place it and I'll make that the inch and three eighths. And then I'll push escape. So it looks reasonable, but it's not fully defined. To finish this off, now that I have everything dimensioned, I have to add a few more relationships he doesn't mention. So this arc and this arc are equal. We notice how it changes, so I want to pay attention to that. I want to make sure that this line doesn't go too high. I can still pull things around and change them. And the last thing I want to do, I can also move this point back down here, get it roughly where it should be. So this arc and this arc are also equal. And to try and figure out what other relationship I need, I'm going to move this around. I'm also going to double check, did I miss any dimensions? Right, so I move this around, I see how it behaves. It's going to give me an indication of what I'm missing. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to add, is I'm going to select this arc, hold control, select the center line, and this arc, and I'm going to add symmetry. That will now fully define my sketch and I'm ready to continue on.